Welcome to your favorite show. Let's speak English. Hello. Welcome back to your favorite TV show. Let's speak English. TV show. It's still me. No other person. Your TV host. Precious. I was here live to bring you something very cool. Last time, some couple of months ago, I had somebody all the way from the UK, Wolverhampton to be precise. She's back here again with me. And today, she came with something cool, some wonderful news I'm sure you would like to hear. Welcome yes. back, Felicity, right? Yes. What's her name? Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Last time when I had you on my show, it was so energetic and okay. I really enjoy having you. And having you again is something I've always dreamed about. It's not, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, it's not like a flattery, but that's the truth. You know, I keep telling people I had this lady from, from the UK and she was too cool. <laughs> and I wish to have her again. I'm glad to have you again. Yeah, well, your dreams have come true. <laughs> Actually, my dreams usually come true. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I wish mine did. <laughs> Okay, talking about you coming back, what brings you back to Mongolia? Uh, well, as you said, I come with very good news. Um, last, last time I came in October was the first time I came to visit Royal, um, Royal Academy. And we've been doing a lot of work since I came. Not just myself, but my director came and met your institution. And then the president actually visited Wolverhampton, visited our campus, met our vice-chancellor, and that was just before Christmas, and they signed an agreement, which basically meant that we would then look into a possibility of a two plus two agreement. And the great news is that that has happened. The business school have been working very hard, looking at your curriculum, your qualifications, and what they've actually been able to do is successfully map a two plus two agreement for your students to come and study at our university. That's good. So what we're trying to say is that right now, Royal University has an agreement with Wolverhampton University. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so what courses do you offer at Wolverhampton? Like, if a student should study at Royal and he wants to transfer, what kind of courses are transferable? Okay, well, at the moment, <coughs> I know that Royal are developing new courses, but at the moment, uh, business management, marketing management, and human resource management are the three courses where students study their first two years here and then go to the University of Wolverhampton and complete the next two years. And the key point with that is they will still get exactly the same certificate if they had studied their full bachelor's degree in Wolverhampton. So obviously, I'm sure this, what, this is what you're thinking right now, the cost, that's exactly. the major advantage. I was about asking that question. So, what's the tuition like? Okay, well, typically the tuition is £10,700 per year. So, in Tukrig, I think that's about 30 million eek. That sounds a lot in Tukrig. However, we are offering, um, we offer a 10% international discount to Royal uh, University students. Oh, so, cool. when they come uh, and enrol, the second payment, or they can actually pay in instalments as well, because at the University of Wolverhampton, we completely understand that course fees in the UK are quite high for international students yeah. and we understand that they can't maybe pay all in one go so we have two payment options either they pay the deposit and then the remainder when they arrive okay or they pay the deposit and then three installments in November January and April so that obviously is a great benefit for students and their parents inevitably who are probably helping fund their studies but then we give them the 10% discount, so it brings the course fees down to nine, about £9,600. Okay, so let's break it down. Yeah. If you want to study at Wolverhampton, yes. first of all, you get enrolled to Royal International University. Of course. But after that, when you get your admission abroad, like if you want to transfer, you pay deposit. Yes. How many percent? You have to pay £5,000 deposit, Five thousand pounds, which is about deposit. half of the tuition fee for the year. Okay. This is a deposit is, that is required by the university because we are sponsoring the student's visa. Okay. So this deposit obviously comes off the course fee eventually. Okay. So this is pay, required to be paid before the student comes to the UK. And when you come to the UK, 
how much time do you have to complete the deposit? So you would pay the deposit. For example, the perfect uh, process would be the students from Royal get their grades in June. Okay, yeah. They have already applied to Wolverhampton. They've gone through the process with foreign relations here at the university. They've already applied to our university. They've told us their contact details, their name. They've provided an academic reference, maybe from the dean of the business school. They've already provided their English uh, examination results. Okay. The only thing that would be remaining would be their Royal University grades and the deposit. Okay. So by June they get their grades and then they would send us their statement of results. When we receive that, the only condition left is the deposit. Now, ideally they pay the deposit around the 6th of July because that then gives plenty of time to get the visa. Okay. Once the student pays the deposit, we would send them what is called a CAS letter. Now that is proof from the UK Border Agency that we are 100% willing to sponsor the student on the Tier 4 student visa. Okay. So we pay for that CAS letter and release it to Royal University and they will give it to the student. The student can then apply for the visa. So that's why the deposit is required. Okay. And the deposit is considered as part of the tuition? Of course, yes. It's half of, pretty much half of the tuition. Okay. Um, but, and then, like I said, the remainder of the tuition is either paid in November by a certain date. And if it's paid by that date, we give the 10% commission uh, not commission, 10% discount, discount sorry, yeah. for the uh, student to bring the course fee down to like £9,000. And if it's not paid on the date, on the same day? We will not then give them the international mm. discount. Okay, and um, how many weeks grace can you give to a student? Let's say, you know, sometimes things happen in life, you don't plan for it. Yeah, like understandable. A student paid a deposit, gets his or her visa, gets to the UK, and something happens, maybe some family problem or some financial issue, and the student is not able to complete this payment on the same day. Okay, well we obviously have a great student services uh, team at the university and counselling, and we, you have to bear in mind in the UK we are not profit-making universities, we don't <laughs> want to say give us your money, and you know, we understand situations and we take all sorts of circumstances into account. Okay. I can't say here and now exactly what we would do because circumstances vary dramatically. But okay. that student, as long as they communicate with us and don't wait till the last minute, there will be no problem. They have to just keep in touch with either myself or the student support team and let us know their problems because we're here to help as well. You know, we have a student counselling team, we have fantastic infrastructure within the university to be able to provide any kind of assistance okay. and obviously okay, so see what we can do around the financial side. Okay, still talking about finance. Yes. Um, are there possibilities of students getting jobs? Of course, yes. That's. One of the benefits as well of a recent change we made within the university. Um, firstly, I'll talk about the start date. So, Royal University students would actually not start in September, which is typical with most British universities. We've pushed back our start date to October. Now, that's for all the students within the university. Now, there's two major benefits of this. One major benefit is the visa time. It takes away a lot of the stress behind applying for a visa, especially if there's a last minute panic, especially okay. because can you imagine all the students applying for their visas in August because the UK universities are September. So it takes a lot of pressure off with that. Okay. But the major benefit, talking about money, is that students are allowed during summer holidays or Christmas holidays, whatever, uh, during holidays to work full time. Now, if they'd started back in September, they would have had three months full time work eligibility. Okay, that's still good, mm -hmm. but if they start in October, there's now four months because they finish their um, course in May, so then they have four months to be able to work full-time. There is a minimum wage in the UK as well. So I actually calculated that students can earn 12 million Tugrig over the summer. They can also work part-time during their studies, typically with a British visa, Obviously, sometimes there may be exceptional circumstances, but most students with the visa are allowed to work 20 hours per week. Now, 
in all honesty, I'm not a teacher, but I would never recommend that many. Students are making a huge investment to come to the UK. Their parents and the students are financially and the effort that they've made to study well at Royal University to be able to get the grades to come to the UK. So I would hate for them to potentially jeopardise their studies by working a little bit too much. They have the possibility to work 20 hours, but I would always just recommend about 10 hours per week. And again, the minimum wage is six, well, it's over six pounds an hour, but it's about 17,000 Tugrig per hour. So you can see how I calculated 12 million per hour uh -huh. over the summer. Great. So you're saying that if a student should work like just 10 hours per week, he stands to make like 12 million Tugrig? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the summer, if they work 37 hours per week, which is full time, you know, Monday to Friday or they might work Saturday or Sunday, depending okay. upon the job. But typically in the UK, full-time is classed as 37 hours per week. So what I did is I calculated 17,000 Tugrig per hour. 37 hours per week for four months is 12, over 12 million Tugrig. Okay. So they would still have to work hard, but 37 hours is easy. I used to, When I was 16, I would work a lot. 18, I worked more than 37 oh, hours per week. Oh, yeah. that's so interesting. So, what's the workload like in your school, the workload? Uh, okay, well it varies on the course and within the university we obviously expect students to do a lot of own independent study. We don't, you know, tell them exactly how many hours they should work a week, but there is an expected amount and students must meet that and typically exceed that if they want to do really well and get a first class degree. So. They have obviously lecturers work, lectures, workshops and seminars and then they have a lot of independent study. But the great thing about Wolverhampton as well is not only do the lecturers obviously encourage the students to do independent study but other students encourage students to do independent study. That's very much the culture of British education. It's very much sharing ideas, sharing knowledge and working together because that's how I feel and obviously the British education we feel that students really excel when they actually share ideas and, oh, I, I hadn't thought about that aspect, you know, critical thinking. So we have a learning centre where the whole ground floor uh, doesn't just have books, you know, it is a library, but the whole ground floor is there for students to go and meet other students and, you know, study together and revise together. And um, I have a work Facebook page. And I saw last night that uh, some of my student friends on Facebook, they uh, checked into the library last night, I think about 2am, because at the moment the library is open 24 hours, okay. which is, they love, because sometimes you get an urge to go and study at like 2am, 3am, and we allow that at the university. Okay. The accommodation is very close to the library, there's 24 hour security, so it's safe to walk to the learning centre. And students take advantage of the 24-hour opening times during revision periods. So, Okay, that's nice. Um, still talking about finance. Mm -hmm. The tuition, does it include accommodation and feeding? No, no. Um, accommodation, we have three different types. The key point here is that in the UK, a lot of universities don't actually own the land or the accommodation. However, the University of Wolverhampton does. Uh, we've been a university, well, we've been teaching for over 180 years and we've been on that site for a long time. Uh, we've owned the accommodation for a long time. So we're able to keep the accommodation fees at the lowest possible price. Okay. So in Tugrig, accommodation ranges from 10 million Tugrig per year. Okay. So note there that if they work over summer, they can pay for the accommodation. Only. Well, only? <laughs> That's great! <laughs> <laughs> if, like, if, if the work over summer, you have 12 million to a group, and you pay 10 million to a group, you have 10 million to a group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it's better than nothing, actually. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Better, than, definitely. Nothing, better yeah. than if you'd have worked three months and got 9 million to a group, yeah. and be minus 1 million to a group. Yeah, it's better <laughs> than nothing. I was, um, I was studying some time in Europe, in a country, I don't want to call the name because of the camera, and it was kind of difficult to cope at the time when I had some financial problem yeah. because there was no job. Right, okay. Yeah, there was no job. So if you make 12 million to a group in five months, it's a whole lot. 
good. Yeah. I can say that from experience. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I went to university. I had to help pay my accommodation, so I had to work part-time. I didn't work full-time. But, um, yeah, we have three different types of accommodation, ranging from 10 million to grig for the economy to 14 million to grig for ensuite. All of our accommodation has its own bed. It's not like American universities where you're in dormitories and you share. You get your privacy at our university. Okay. You have your own bed and wash basin and desk, obviously. And in economy and standard, you share the kitchen and bathrooms. Okay. However, we also offer ensuite accommodation, which is the 14 million tug rig. Okay. And that there, you have your own uh, bathroom, but you share the kitchen, which is nice because it's sociable. And, you know, can you imagine all the different types of cuisine that are cooked? We have students from over 120 countries in the world, so... I'm sure every different type of food possible has been cooked in those kitchens. Interesting. Now, talking about accommodation, yeah. can we break it down a mm -hmm. little bit? How much is one month, like per se, like? Okay, let's say about a million to group. For one month. And some students, if they are financially challenged, can they pay monthly or you must pay for one year? No, you don't have to pay for one year at all. It's paid in instalments. Okay. I think three. But what I'll do is I will check okay. and then let a foreign relations team here know. Okay. Because I know that you can definitely pay in instalments. Okay. We don't expect all the money up front. That would be really unfair. And we are the University of Opportunity and we would never do that for students. I think it's three because that's what mine was, but let me double check. But one thing to also note, which I didn't get in my university accommodation, because mine was private. And bearing in mind, this is 10 years ago, my accommodation was more than what the University of Wolverhampton accommodation is now. So that's indicative of accommodation prices in the UK. 10 years ago, my accommodation was more. That's crazy. Okay. But also, there are some more benefits of what our accommodation provides. We provide free uh, high-speed Wi-Fi for all, um, all students, free contents insurance, all the bills are included, water, gas, electricity, and students also get free gym membership, which, when I was at university, was £50 per month. Hmm. So Now it's free. Well, I went to a different university, you see. Okay. So I'm just showing you the comparison. Okay, comparison. Uh, when I went, I paid £50 a month for the gym, and here it's absolutely free. free. And also, another one, which some people laugh when I, I get so excited about it, is that the laundry is free. So I would be excited too. I know! Because I hate washing. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't do it for them. But it's free. Like, they do it for themselves? Yes! Come on, independent, independence, it's great. Maybe some people will help show you how to use the machine. No. Okay. But they have to go there and toss in their clothes and they do the They have to washing. pick up their clothes and put them in the machine. How difficult is that? Well, <laughs> when you have someone who dislikes everything about washing, that can be difficult. Oh, my. <laughs> no, basically, um, it used to cost me one pound every time to use the washer or the dryer. Okay. So... Can you imagine how many pound coins I needed all the time to go? Yeah. I used to spend about four pounds per week. So students are saving a lot of money there. So it's a great benefit, but no, you don't have a personal washer. Maybe you could uh, pay your housemate to help, <laughs> to help you. you. <laughs> Maybe that's your decision. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Felicity. I'll be right back on this show in a short while. Let's have a break. European Business Assembly in Odolsi Shifu Bagot Gorumstedt, Mongling Royal Academy, Hamtrum, Ujuljoy. Thank you very much for staying tuned to us. I'm back again to the studio, and with me is still Felicity, all the way from Wolverhampton, United Kingdom, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, we were talking about finances and some stuff about students. So I want to ask you a question. You said it's possible for students to get a job. Yeah. 
is, is, is it possible like for your school to assist them? Is there any way to assist the students to get a job? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have a career centre at the university, a huge team within the career centre. Not only do we provide kind of basic information such as weekly updates and a careers notice board online for students to go and have a look at what jobs are available either on campus or externally because a lot of companies actually advertise jobs through the university. Um, I'll just point there that we are uh, the leaders in the UK in okay. what's called knowledge transfer partnership which is very indicative of how closely we work with local businesses in the country and employability. So local businesses trust us, they trust our students and our graduates and that's why they come to us when, when they have even part-time opportunities. So students will be able to search online for that but we also provide additional services such as maybe a student has never worked part-time before and maybe they don't even have a, a CV, a resume. So we have free workshops for students to learn about how to do a really good CV, especially targeting British businesses uh, or international businesses. So not only will that help them part-time employment in the UK, when they graduate they also have these skills to be able to write you know, really effective curriculum vitae and covering letters and really be able to present themselves well to employers. And that's one of the reasons why our employability rate is actually now 93%. Wow. Students within the first six months either go on to find a job or go on to further study, and at the moment it's 93%. And that was the new statistic about three weeks ago. Wow. So we also help them with presentation skills. So because mm -hmm. some jobs require you to go and do a presentation, yeah. we help them with that. Um, and all sorts of other soft skills around looking for jobs. We also have um, volunteering opportunities. I know not all students would like to do that because some do need the money, mm -hmm. but that's a really great personality building and looks fantastic on your CV for the future. And we also help students with volunteering opportunities. Okay. I think two or three at the moment, students that I know uh, very well, they are volunteering in Birmingham City. Okay. which is just 15 minutes away from Wolverhampton, uh, to let you know. It's the second biggest city in the UK. And they're volunteering there to help um, encourage people to start using uh, bicycles and walking more and really helping with the fitness okay. um, agenda there in Birmingham. So, as you can see, there are many different opportunities. Students do not find it difficult to get a part-time job in Wolverhampton. Uh, we're the only university in the city. So there's not too much competition from other universities. Okay. Uh, students could also work in Birmingham. I know some that actually go and work in, you know, like the Apple Mac store. Yeah. Which is great as well. Yeah. Um, so students can either get part-time jobs that are not terribly relevant to their course and they are just doing it to earn money, but they can also get help to find a job that is relevant to marketing or human resources or business. So. Yeah, we're very strong in the areas of careers and that's why our wow. graduates do so well. That's so interesting. Now, we've talked about getting this money. Let's talk about spending this money. <laughs> What's the cost of living like in Wolverhampton? Oh, well, that's... They might find it quite hard to spend all of their money, actually. <laughs> uh, Wolverhampton is one of the lowest cost of living cities in the UK. I even noticed a difference when I moved from Manchester to Wolverhampton. Uh, the price is much lower, actually. What I, would, what I typically say to students is that £300, £350 per month is easily achievable to live on that, which is about $500. So that's something which they don't even have to spend that much. You know, you've got to remember their accommodation has everything that they need. If they really don't have much money and just to buy food, then they can reduce. It's completely dependent upon the student. But Okay, can I ask one question? Mm-hmm. How much does nightclub cost in Wolverhampton? I don't know. I never go to nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. We won't talk too much about it because yeah, just we don't want to encourage. Exactly. Um, but there are a lot of student uh, group communities within uh, Wolverhampton, and there's like Facebook groups where international students can join, and there's local bars and nightclubs, and there's student nights on 
I think, I'm not a student so I don't know, <laughs> uh, but the student nights on like Thursdays, Wednesdays where maybe they could get uh, drinks for very cheap, but I don't want to go into too much detail. Okay. Let's just put it to. this way, there's... It's affordable. Yeah, and it's also, the positive, it's also very nice to meet people from other, from countries, other countries, a mix of people from other countries. Okay. But it's not, as, the alcohol is not as cheap as here. Okay. I will say that. The vodka is definitely not as cheap. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any famous alumni like you want you want to talk about? Yeah, we uh, we have very strong alumni at Wolverhampton from all different sectors. I can't talk about alumni from every single course because we have over two hundred undergraduate courses and one hundred and twenty masters. Uh, but one business alumni is actually the head of Facebook in the UK. Um, I don't know his name. But oh, this is what I know. Okay. <laughs> um, and we have famous alumni from this School of Art. He actually produced the movie, you know, Inception? Yeah, I do. And he won an Oscar. So oh, one really? of our alumni wow. has an Oscar. Mm. He's called Nigel Babb, I know that. Mm -hmm. um, some of our other alumni have gone on to become uh, like football managers. I know mm -hmm. you would like that. Okay. Uh, one for the ladies' team, I think, in Arsenal which I don't think you like Arsenal, do you? I don't hate Arsenal, okay. but my heart goes for Chelsea every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> and Liverpool. Um, and actually one of our alumni is the head of Sabah State in Malaysia. Uh, we've got a lot of high political alumni as well. So that's I will cool. have to find out the gentleman that's the head of international Facebook, Facebook in the UK. Okay. You should. Yeah, it's definitely not Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not him. <laughs> Before anyone gets the wrong idea. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. They get that. They get it. Okay, lastly, we've been talking about 2 plus 2 program, 2 plus 2 program. What are the benefits of 2 plus 2 program? Okay, well, we've obviously spoken about cost a lot. Yeah. But, you know, seriously, students studying their full bachelors in the UK, they may never, ever be able to achieve it because of the price. We have to be realistic. Obviously, at Wolverhampton, we do whatever as much as we can to keep the price low and as attractive for international students. Um, but this 2 plus 2 agreement not only means that students can stay in Mongolia for a little bit longer and maybe save up a little bit of money while they're here to help pay towards their tuition in the UK. Um, so they study two years here and then only have to study two years in the UK, so they're obviously saving the money but they still get exactly the same qualification if they'd studied their full bachelor's in the UK. Now, typically, a Mongolian student, uh, once they graduate from high school, they have to study what we call a foundation year, and then they do their three-year bachelor's. So they would have to do a four-year degree pathway. Okay. Even though bachelor's in the UK are three years, because of the level of the high school qualification, they have to do foundation year. So they're automatically saving two years UK tuition fee, but still getting the same qualification. They're saving £20,000. Okay. Plus the accommodation. You know, they're saving about £30,000 to still get the same qualification, but with the same quality, because I know the quality of here. I was about saying that. Absolutely. I was about saying that. We would not create an agreement with the university we did not believe had a fantastic curriculum, great teachers, we've met you four times in the space of six months, you know, less than six months. Yeah. So we know that the quality of teaching is extremely high and that's why you would still get the qualification, exactly the same quality, different experience, you know, studying two years in the UK, fantastic, but saving a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay, um, do you have any plans for the master degree program? Because at Royal University, we also have a master degree program. Yes. Um, do you have any plans for that? Like this one plus one program, can I call it that? One plus well, one. Well, this is the thing. Like last October, we were still a little bit unsure as to exactly what we would be doing, so I can't say too much. But we are talking about MBA, and we're looking into all sorts of different options. We're looking into whether it can be fully delivered here, but they still get the same certificate as if they'd studied it in the UK. However, then, they are missing out on part of the experience, which is such a huge part of gaining a British degree. So we're also then looking into the possibility of two semesters here and one semester in the UK. 
So maybe okay. studying two semesters here, but then doing their dissertation in Wolverhampton. Okay. Or we're looking into other types of one plus two or two plus one or one plus zero point five. We're just looking at the moment, mm -hmm. and we're map we're looking at the curric curriculum, and we're seeing how they would tie in together. But and then we are also looking at the op we want to give MBA students as many opportunities as possible because we know especially at that stage in life people are in different situations some people are married with children so they may not be able to come to the UK but why should we not give them the opportunity like I said with the University of Opportunity we want to do as many things as possible to ensure that people have access to our education okay but the most important thing is there is hope oh of course of course and also you know we have other masters available and uh, even for students not from Royal, from Ixazag, and if they get the English, obviously, uh, they can come to our university and study their Masters, and we are talking with foreign relations about that as well, and That's providing cool. incenti financial incentives okay. for the Masters. That's good. Thank you very much, Felicity, no, for you. coming on my show. <laughs> uh, right, any time you come, you bring this energy that I enjoy so much, <laughs> and definitely I'm going to pull you down again. Very soon, yeah. Great. Thank you very much for watching. It's Let's Speak English TV show brought to you by Royal HD TV, courtesy of Royal International University. I'll be here again next week with something cool to blow your mind. Till then, stay tuned, don't go away. Keep watching. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Same station, same time, same place.